question types called plan, map, and diagram completion questions. So this is an example of what you might see. We'll just take a look here so to get familiar with it, and then later in the lesson we'll analyze it a little bit. Uh, but this would be an example of a plan. Uh, so, so a plan is basically uh, the floor plan of a building, uh, usually, and it shows the layout of the rooms and different things you would find inside a building. And as you, as you see there, some information is labeled for you, and some information is missing. And the questions uh, are the things you need to fill, the missing information that you need to fill in. Okay. Now, a map question will look very similar to this, except it will simply be a map of usually a city or a town's, uh, like a downtown area of a city. Uh, maps look like this also. They're not very detailed. Uh, you're not going to have a, an extremely detailed map uh, on the IELTS listening paper. They look very simple, just like the one you see. A diagram will be uh, also similar, but uh, it will not be a map of any kind or a plan. It will be a diagram usually of some kind of object. Uh, or some type of process or phenomenon. So we'll look at an example of a diagram uh, later in this lesson as we do an example question. Um, the other thing to note here just quickly, uh, usually this type of question, plan, map, and diagram completions, will have the answer choices in a box for you. Okay, not always. These can be uh, short answer questions sometimes, but, uh, but most frequently they are, you'll have a, a list of options to choose from to fill in the blanks on the plan, map, or diagram you're looking at. Okay, so let's just become familiar. Let's take a look at how to approach these questions and some basic information about them. All right, so the thing you're going to be listening for in this type of question uh, is often uh, directional vocabulary. So things like north, south, east, west, uh, to go through the door, right? There's going to be someone often giving a tour of some place or for some reason describing the layout of a building, okay? So so uh, you might be listening to a tour guide of some kind or you may be uh, lost and this person is helping you to find various destinations. They're going to give you directional vocabulary and that's what you use to sort of locate and identify identify the different parts of the map or the plan uh, that you're looking at. If it's a diagram uh, qu question, you might be hearing descriptions of an object or some type of phenomenon, and you need to label the, the various elements that you see on the diagram itself. Okay, so you use the directional vocabulary, uh, descriptions of the places or the things you're, you're looking at uh, from the speakers, and uh, descriptions of whatever object or phenomenon is, is taking place, and you try to use those to fill in the gaps that you see, uh, the questions. Okay, now in the time you have before uh, listening to the speakers for these types of questions, so your, your time to, make an, uh, to analyze and, and make predictions about uh, the questions, here's some advice on how to handle this particular type of IELTS listening question. Okay, so first of all, make sure you take a close look at the given information on the, uh, on the visual that you're looking at, okay? So uh, they're going to give you some names of places, they're going to give you some clues about where things are that are, that are going to relate directly to what the speakers talk about. About. And so it's important to have a good sense of where things are located on the particular visual that you're looking at for this type of question. So definitely uh, step number one should be to take, just take a scan, scan over the, the visual to sort of get your sense of where things are located. Okay, so the specific things you should look at, the title, directional information, any labels that are already there for you on the, on the visual, and also, of course, look at the, do look at the answer choices that you have, uh, because these things will all relate in some way to what the speakers say in the passage. Okay, so take a close look at all of that information. The next thing you want to do then, after you've sort of scanned the entire thing, trying to gather as much information as you can about where things are and what's going to be uh, described by the speakers, the next thing you want to do is locate the first question. Okay, that is where you're going to hear the information to help you answer that first question first from the speakers. So that's the place to begin. Take a close look in the surrounding area, surrounding that first question to give you clues about where uh, and what you need to be listening for to get that first answer. Because most of the time, almost always, uh, the speakers are going to describe something surrounding that first question to get you started, uh, okay? Then the next thing you want to do is notice the sort of sequence of questions on the visual, okay? So from moving from numbers one to two to three to four, how do the questions progress? And, and you need to make guesses about uh, what are going to be the signals that let me know to listen to move on from one question and to listen for the answer to the next question okay so let's think about that just a little bit on, on what I'm talking about here back to our example question the plan completion question we saw at the beginning of this lesson okay so uh, as, as we're scanning 
uh, as we're scanning this particular plan, notice a few things. So if we're just trying to scan it to get the basic information, well, we look at the title. The title up at, to, up at the top is Office Floor Plan. Okay, so we are looking at an office space of some kind, all right? And that's what we're going to hear described by the speaker. All right, then very important information, some directional information is provided to you. We have the north end all the way to the left and the south end all the way uh, to the right. Okay, that is probably very important information. Uh, it is almost guaranteed that the speaker at some point is going to use north and south as descriptions of what he or she is talking about. Okay, so very important to circle that. Just take and make a note of it, which direction is which uh, on, on this particular map. Okay, so north and south, very key information there. Then as we're looking around, okay, we've got some provided labels. We've got some numbers, uh, uh, numbered rooms at the top, 101, 102, 103, 104, and we're supposed to label uh, the room next to room 101. Uh, we could maybe guess that it's going to be room 100, uh, but IELTS would not give you such an easy question. It's going to be something other than uh, room 100 there. Uh, but uh, that uh, answer choice three is in between, uh, sort of wedged in between room 101 there and the restrooms that are all the way to the left. Uh, so we have to listen for that. Um, but more importantly, as you're uh, analyzing and predicting for this question, uh, as we noted at the earlier, just a moment ago, it's important to begin with question number one. Where is it located and what is surrounding it? Okay, well, question number one on this particular plan is, of course, right in the middle of this plan. Okay, so uh, that could make it tough. We would have to listen for what, what are they going to use to get you started? Are they going to talk about how uh, this particular thing is at the center of the entire complex or is it next to the restrooms or is it uh, adjacent to the cafeteria? All right, we, we would have to listen closely for that, but we know that the information to answer question number one is going to come first in this uh, in the description from the speakers. Okay, so that's key. Then if you look at my arrows there, we just notice, okay, we move north and I guess that's west uh, to number two. So maybe that's something that is going to be described uh, by the speaker as when to move on to question two. And then we go all the way across to the other side of the complex, uh, across the restroom area, across whatever we have for uh, in, the, in the middle of the complex for question one to get to question three. So the questions are going to move in that order. And we should note, OK, what are some possibilities for the way they're going to describe that movement? All right. That's something to pay attention to as you're planning and analyzing questions before you listen to a passage. All right, now let's try to answer some questions here. Uh, I'm going to give you a chance to listen to a part of a passage that would help you to answer these two particular questions, okay? So we've got questions one and two, and we've got our answer choices all the way over to the left. Now, I'm going to help analyze this for you, with you just a little bit before you listen. Uh, notice a couple of things. First of all, uh, our labels. We've got the ocean floor there, so that ship that we see is way at the bottom of the ocean floor. Maybe that's important to our description. Uh, we have something called a trans transducer uh, up to the at the top left corner uh, and actually the, the uh, item itself the transducer is um, is that object you see with the arrow pointing to it so um, perhaps we know what that is perhaps we don't okay if you know what that is great that, that's going to help you but uh, that's something we're going to hear described by the speakers okay we can assume that and then it looks like question answer choice uh, number two question two is going to be something connected to that transducer maybe a part of the transducer so that's important to notice that we might be need to listen for something that is somehow connected to or part of the transducer itself. And then what's going on with these arrows? Well, if you look at the answer choices over to the left, uh, perhaps you could make a good guess. Um, so these arrows are going to be something uh, directionally heading towards the boat that we're seeing down at the bottom of the ocean floor. And then we're, we're supposed to label the arrows going down. And then there are arrows going back up towards this thing, the transducer, okay? We don't need to label those, uh, but apparently that's gonna be something that's described by the speaker in some way as well. All right, so what is the down arrow coming out of the transducer? And what is this object that's attached to or part of the transducer? Those are the things we need to listen for uh, from the speakers of this passage, okay? We've got some answer choices to the left, dormant, ping, Echo, shipwreck, and receiver. All right, now just a quick note here. I noticed, now maybe you don't, you're not sure, um, maybe A is a new word for you, but the word dormant is different from these other words because dormant is an adjective. 
All the other words are nouns. Okay, that is an interesting thing to note if you would notice that uh, before listening to this passage. Okay, so that's enough uh, uh, analyzing this. Why don't you give it a shot? This is, uh, I'll just tell, set this up for you. This is a portion of a uh, classroom discussion where the professor and some students are discussing the topic of sonar. Okay, so we're going to pick it up in about the middle of this passage where uh, the two items that we're supposed to label are described. Okay, I'm going to play the passage now. Professor Milton, how can an object like a shipwreck that's been lying on the ocean floor for years produce an echo? It's completely dormant. Ah, that's because the echo isn't of a noise sent out from the shipwreck. It's sent out from the ship, uh, sorry, uh, the sonar device. That's why we say this is an active sonar transducer. In active sonar, a signal of sound is transmitted through the water. Uh, you may have heard of the words pulse or ping to describe the signal. It's, um, it's a short pitch, but it travels at the speed of sound. And because we know the precise speed of sound and water... Then we know by the time until the echo of the signal gets back to the transducer how far away the object is. Exactly. And in which direction it can be found, too. The sounds emitted from the transducer are sometimes audible, but often they're ultrasonic. That means the pings are so high-pitched they're beyond the capabilities of perception by the human ear. But the transducer is equipped with a special receiver for these kinds of signals. 